Well, if it's Tuesday, and I believe that it is. It is. I've, I haven't checked the calendar. We're up in the attic again, and as you can say, we're actually up in the attic. Finally. Uh, it's, it's been one thing and another. We wanted to come up here and look at some uh, some other stuff that's stashed up here. Um, if you if you know the backstory and history, I packed away many many models temporarily when I was moving, and uh, some twenty years later, they're <laughs> still still packed. And uh, part of what we've been doing uh, in the show is unpacking stuff that hasn't seen the light of day. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So that's you're about right. to see a model that hasn't been exposed to light now for over 20 years. I haven't opened the box, so I don't know what it's going to look like. If there's something in there growling with eight legs, I'm running. There could be. Exit stage I, I will left. say that we mentioned this in the uh, show on the Hallmark Christmas ornaments mm. because they did the Lionel version of the M10,000 Streamliner by Union Pacific. And uh, I mentioned that I had one of those in HO scale. You did. And here it is. It's a blue box. It's a blue box. It does have an actual uh, label here. The official label. The official label. And uh, actually the importer of this, because there's no name on it anywhere, it just says made in Japan. Product wow. number 431. But it was actually imported by AHM. Associated Hobby Manufacturers, better known for their Riverossi engines. Oh! They were the exclusive distributor of Riverossi in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. And then because of, I don't know, deregulation of political markets and blah, 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 blah. blah. But at, at any rate, AHM kind of went away and Riverossi became available directly. So I don't even know what brass manufacturer did this. I doubt that uh, Riverossi did because I don't know that they... But, but this is AHM, and AHM worked exclusively with River Aussie, and yet here it is a brass engine. Oof. So I'm going to try to do this in such a way that you can see as we see what's in here there. after 20 years. Drum roll. Drum roll. Oh. Okay. Your there's paperwork. There's away. paperwork. Visit the national parks every year. Mm-hmm. I must have put a map in here. Progress. Oh, no, there's a, a, a brochure for the M10,000. Wow. And here inside the foam. Ta-da! Oh! Ta -da. And there it is. It's upside oh, down. Oh, it's upside down. So we will turn that around. And there, there it, it is. is. The oh, M10,000 in HO. And they came all custom painted like this. They were Ooh. in the hobby shops for quite a while. And um, one of the things that they did with this guy, uh, the M10,000 was originally a three-car train. And if you remember from the Hallmark uh, and the Lionel version of the Hallmark, and the Hallmark version of Lionel. Anyway, they modeled it as the three-car three train. But Union Pacific, at some point in time, added a fourth car. And you can spot the fourth car because it has a slightly different paint job for whatever reason. Huh. And that would be this one right here. So you can see, I hope, let me get the glare off of it, that, that the, the rear car and the front car have a certain kind of lettering, but the Pullman car that says Overland Trail down here is a, a different lettering where it says Pullman. And uh, that's just, and so they've done this accurately. Ralph Gartner's got one of these, and he immediately repainted it because he wasn't happy. And he also took his Overland Trail car, this guy, and he just stuck it in the box somewhere because he wanted to model it as the three-car train. Wow. Now, you may also notice, a little dusty after 20 years. Gosh. Um, there are no wheel trucks. I was just going to say, where are the wheel where trucks? Where are the wheel trucks? Because when you lift this thing up, the wheel trucks stay behind. And the reason is on the, the M10,000 and on a lot of these articulated trains of the day, the, uh, there was only one wheel truck between the cars. Oh, how So it went weird. something like that. And the way AHM has chosen to model that here is they've got a little swinging pin and uh. that goes into that hole and it sort of snaps in place. Wow and that will couple your cars. Huh. And then you got that. Now, 
what you have to do in order to do that is you take the two cars that you're planning to couple and you bring those together and then you have to swing those little pins across and then snap the wheel truck in place so they share a wheel truck so they share the wheel truck because that that's how the actual interesting. the actual train did that oh my gosh so um that's how they've done that and so it takes a minute to set the whole thing up i have never put the glass windows in this when it when it was delivered it does have a, a full interior and so on. It sure does. Well, I can see the diaphragms have sort of paid the heavy after all yeah. these years. It came with those not attached, and I've attached them now that they've been sitting wrinkled up in the foam for 20 years. Oh, man. Look I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with that. Right. But that should be fairly simple to do. Uh, I haven't. I never put the glass windows in. It came without glass windows, and you're supposed to just you're figure out a way. and. Put windows, windows in. Huh. Here's the the lead unit. Let me get away so that it comes into focus a bit. I hope. And um, it had the strangest look, and it had a diesel engine up here. Back in these days, diesel diesel trains were pretty unheard of because you know everything was steam. Right. They couldn't get the horsepower out of the diesels to make them work in any kind of an efficient way. And so there was a lot of experimenting with diesels. But in this case, by building a three-car train with an aluminum body, something just happened. I'm not sure what. <laughs> an alert. <laughs> an alert it's, came it's from up our on fan that. base. Yeah, the fan base, yes. <laughs> Some kind of comment. Just yeah, already. We haven't even put the movie up and we're getting comments. But the, the motor is in here, and the only attached wheel truck is here. Well, actually, I take it back. It's got an attached wheel truck at each end. I think the actual um, M10,000, the real one from the day, had motors at every wheel truck. Wow. And then they sent the electricity from the generator on the diesel engine down the whole train. Not sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what they did. Um, and then the tail end has this streamlined, blunt end deal. Um, and then here with the AHM model, they put another powered wheel truck since that's the only other fixed wheel truck and, and the other wow. wheel trucks are these floating wheel trucks for the articulation. I think it's interesting the belly of the train is all finished. I mean, it's almost like an airplane fuselage. Yeah, yeah. They, they were really that's... going after and, and part of the reason they were doing this is that's the market they were going after. Oh. They were getting kind of nervous about uh, airplanes taking over the market. I see. And so they wanted to emphasize just how dangerous and that the airlines are all actually run by the mob. And oh. There's a great uh, series um, Oh, what is that called? I can't remember. It's a, it was an early John Wayne movie series, and uh, it takes place on trains, and the enemy uh, is an airline, and they're fighting against this airline. And the, the airline's <laughs> all these wise guys, you know, and they're running around beating everybody up. And they just land the airplanes randomly in cornfields and stuff and throw the passengers off. Oh, my. It's really funny. <laughs> I was always afraid they, to fly. <laughs> they were they were afraid of the airlines, and so oh. that's part of the look that they were going for yeah. is to try to make these behave and look a little bit more like an airplane. Very mm. modern, very, very modern, streamlined, streamlined wind let resistant. Let you know that, yeah. that the fast. airlines are not the way you want to travel. Union Pacific on the train yeah. is the way you want to travel. <laughs> well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe because that will help us and it'll help you because then you'll get notified. Of course, it doesn't cost anything. You just click on the subscribe button and then you'll get notified when we upload something. That's right. If you, so if you then select your little notification bell. Otherwise, you're just a subscriber. And the way to do all of those things <laughs> is to click the blue button. Are you ready for ready? it? Here you go. Zoink! Right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday with Sunday Drive. See you then. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye. bye.